the other man, the quirky character? He's a doctor. A doctor? Mm hmm He should be a doctor, don't you think? C.S. Lewis meets H.G. Wells meets Father Christmas. That's the doctor. Doctor who? Mm -hmm. We want to do a science fiction serial. Legitimate stuff, though. No tin robots or BEMs. BEMs? Bug-eyed monsters. You know, mutations and death rays and brains in a glass jar, that kind of crap. It's going to run all year long. So, good-looking guy, good-looking gal, a kid who gets herself into all kinds of trouble, plus an older man, quirky. I'll come back to him. They travel about space and time, getting into scrapes. That's a lovely idea. You know me. Pop, pop, pop. <laughs> We want history, too. Proper history. The kids at home should learn something. And what about the other man, the quirky character? He's a doctor. A doctor? Mm hmm He should be a doctor, don't you think? Makes him an authority for you. So I kind of reassure you. So, what do you think? Look, Sydney, I would love to work with you again. Really, I would. It's just... I gave myself a year. Get on in TV or get out. Hey, 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 hey. I don't want you to be my assistant again, kid. I want you to produce it. Produce it? Sure. They've never had a female producer here. Sit down. You're just what this place needs. Someone with piss and vinegar in their veins. Thanks. I think. I did a show called Pathfinders for ITV. You see it? Um, we had an old guy as the hero. Grumpy old guy. That's what we want here. <laughs> what about Leslie French? He did marvellous. He's working with Visconti. He gave us a polite no. Cyril Cusack? A less polite no. <clears throat> Can I help you? I think you're in my office. That's a rather interesting way of looking at it. I'm rather an interesting person. I don't doubt it. Rex Tucker, I'm looking after Doctor Who. Pending the appointment of the permanent producer. Oh, is he with you? You're looking at him. I keep coming back to Hugh David. Who? Uh, he was in Night Errant on ITV. Lovely actor. Not old enough for the doctor, surely. Well, we don't want Grandpa Moses, do we? We need someone who can play older. The shooting schedules are going to be pretty punishing. Mm. I've got some ideas. I'll call Hugh, see what he thinks. I'd rather you didn't. Is that a fact? Waste of time. We need someone like Frank Morgan in The Wizard of Oz. He's dead. Rex. And American. I said like. Well, perhaps we should all, um, sleep on it. After all, it took the months to find Scarlet O'Hara. <laughs> Dear lady, may I have a word? Hello? Yes? you were Sydney's production assistant on the other channel. Yes. So this is quite a promotion. Well, apparently. Man to ruffle a few feathers. If feathers don't ruffle, nothing flies. This show's going to be a terrific challenge, you know. Outer space, time travel. In this first script, they go back to the Stone Age. You're going to need all the help you can get. So Rex is going to act as a sort of Mentor to you. A ship can't have two captains. Dear lady. Please don't call me that. Sorry. And what about you, Mervyn? What's your function? I'm to be your sort of technical boffin. <laughs> Help you through the mire of all this. Sydney obviously thinks he's got the right person for the job. That's what he wants for Doctor Who. Someone with piss and vinegar in their veins. Did he say that? He's very blunt. Yes. Look, all I'm saying is, dear... Le 
Verity, all I'm saying is, experience is not a dirty word. Don't fight us. Perhaps you could add a few drops of warm beer in with your uh, Pearson... mixture. Just for the time being. Ah, we better clear out. We'll have the news team in here. That's clever. So they don't have to look down at their words all the time? Yes. Quite a wheeze. Someone will make a fortune out of that. I suppose so. Shame I didn't get to the patent office faster. Why? I invented it. <laughs> I don't want any of this muck, thanks very much. I'll have a drink. Right. You the director, son? Yes. Hardly out of the cradle, the pair of you. Right, let's talk turkey. I'm not sure about this, not sure at all. No? Apart from anything else, I don't want to take on another long run. Had enough of that on the army game. Nearly killed me. Would you like to Weekly, order some drinks? bloody rep. Whiskey and soda, choppy choppy. Yes, sir. Uh, whose idea was all this? That fellow from ITV? Sidney Newman, yes. But so many people have been at the birth of the thing, we'd be here all day. Tell me about the characters. Two school teachers, Ian and Barbara. They're intrigued about one of their pupils, a young girl called Susan. She seems to have impossible knowledge for a girl from 1963. So the school teachers follow her home, but home is a junkyard. Yes, yes, yes. Scripts. I need to see scripts. Oh, they're going wonderfully. <laughs> wonderfully. The BBC are really excited about the show. I mean, they're throwing everything at it. State-of-the-art facilities. How do they get about? A flying saucer or something? Ours is a space and time machine that can blend in with its background. Oh, you mean it's covered in invisible paint or something? No, 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 no. It adapts to suit its environment. It gets stuck in one shape. A police box. Police box. How gorgeous would that be? An ordinary 20th century object on the surface of an alien planet. Fantastic. <laughs> and the opening titles are like nothing you've ever seen. Yes. You see, if you point a camera down its own monitor, it creates the most wonderful shapes, patterns, like mirrors, endlessly reflecting, swooping and pulsing like butterfly wings. Maybe I could be in them. Just pop in front of the camera, would you, Tony? Let's see how that looks. Oh, Christ, no. That's terrifying. And wait till you hear the music. We're using the latest technology. How did you do it? Brian's house keys. What about the doctor himself? He's something like 600 years old. Looks like a senile old man, but he's tough. Tough. Tough and wiry like an old turkey. It's what you do so well, Mr. Hartnell. Stern and scary but with a twinkle. Trust me, Bill, you're perfect for it. No one will be able to resist you. Do you think so? C.S. Lewis meets H.G. Wells meets Father Christmas. That's the Doctor. Doctor who? Mm -hmm. What are you doing? Being patient. I can be very patient. <laughs> you can't stay here. Now what shall we talk about? I've got all day. Oh, don't be ridiculous. The old curiosity shop? The Roman Forum? The Hanging Gardens of Babylon? Symphonies in pencil and ink. So surely you can turn your hand to my teeny little time machine. Just turn that blazing talent of yours to my little kiddie show. Who knows what might happen? It won't take you more than half an hour. You are a very trying woman. Then I'll get out of your hair. Maybe the muse will be with you. Maybe it will be the best thing you've ever thought of. Very well. Very well. Here. Here, madam. Here's your bloody TARDIS.
rather well, isn't it? Ooh, the cupboard doors and into Narnia. Too bloody big. Takes up half the studio. Yes? Yes, my love, dear. Yes? Yes, yes, was. I heard him. Right. Could you pass me my script, please? No. Uh, sorry, boys no. and girls. Sir. He says he won't have his teeth blacked out. Dougie, it's 100,000 BC. Yeah. yeah, I know. It's the tribe of gum. He says he got them whitened to get onto the telly. What? Well, does it matter? We only see his bloody shadow. I'll do it. What? I don't mind. I've already got Sam Fleas in my wife front. It can't get much worse. OK. Stout man. I think we're sorted then, Gov. Thank you, Dougie. Red light, OK. Into position, everyone. And roll to record in 15. God, it's hot in here. Anyone else hot? Yeah. So can we do something about the heat? I thought we'd be used to it. What? Nothing. Watch it, Arthur. Five minutes, chum. Then they turn the lights out. Them's the rules. OK, everyone. Quiet, please. Quiet. Five. Four. Six. OK, coming to camera one. On one. OK, clear two. These people are known to you, I believe. What are you doing here? They're two of my school teachers. Is that your excuse for this unwarrantable, unwarranted intrusion? You had no right to invite them here. Yeah, yeah, come on, get a move on. Looks like a rabbit hutch in here. Okay. You nice and snug? What the hell is that? Monster for the next story. <laughs> what, sink plunger and egg whisk? Oh well, they can't take over the universe, might be able to whip up a decent omelette. <laughs> to record in 15, 14, quiet please everyone, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, action! You will move ahead of us and follow my directions on two immediately. Tighter on one. They're tighter. Stand by one. On one. Near three. Stand by two. Two. I said immediately. Fire! My legs. On two. My legs. Your legs are paralyzed. You will recover shortly unless you force us to use our weapons again. Well, everyone, meet the Daleks. Gosh, they're creepy, aren't they? They're actually really creepy. Well then, who's who? <laughs> I won't lie to you. I'm scared stiff. Oh, you, you'll be fine. In fact, you'll be wonderful. I, I told them, you know, there's only one man in England who can take over. Oh? Couldn't I get him? everyone please and roll to record in 15 
Don't forget to click below to subscribe to the official Doctor Who YouTube channel.